Hello everyone, welcome on board. I am Mohit Suman. I work as a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work in the developer tools team. And we create different toolings for different IDs like VS Code, IntelliJ, and Eclipse to enhance the developer experience upon hybrid cloud infrastructure. And for the same, we have this demo where we are going to showcase you uh, OpenShift connector and VS Code extension. So let's go ahead. We have uh, OpenShift connector, which is basically a VS Code ID extension that works on top of it and allows you to work with different applications component with respect to the OpenShift instance which is running. So to give a brief overview of it, uh, the basic idea is to provide the developers all the features which are available on an ID, leverage it and try to create, deploy and even debug those applications and components directly from your ID itself and get it up and running on the OpenShift cluster. So for this demo, the basic architecture is uh, shown in the slide is we have OpenShift connector, which is a VS code extension and that under the hood runs OpenShift do, which is also known as Odo, uh, which is a CLI tool that uh, does all the calls to the OpenShift cluster and we also use OpenShift CLI and then we have Red Hat code ready containers which basically allows us to run a local instance of OpenShift 4.2. So these are the basic components which I will be showcasing in the demo going forward. So let's go to the uh, marketplace where this extension is basically available. So if you have a VS code instance running, uh, you can download this extension directly in your VS code ID. If you press install, this will uh, install onto your VS code ID. This extension is supported by Red Hat and it's currently has approximately more than 9000 installs and it supports all the three platforms, Windows, Linux and Mac OS. For this demo, I will be focusing on Mac OS. So let's uh, go ahead and get started with the demo. So here I have my latest VS code installed and if I go to this activity bar on the left hand side, if you see the extensions, if you go ahead and say what are the extensions which are installed, you can see I have already OpenShift connector which has been installed here and this is the icon which refers to that. So now if you see it has started. So there are different actions which are available right now. So this basically allows you to log into the different cluster. This is to allow you to switch between different contexts based on your kube configuration file. For example, if your kube config has different entries of different OCP running, you can uh, directly switch context from here. You need not switch, uh, go to the terminal, switch context in your kube config. And if you have any issues running with this extension, you can directly raise a uh, issue on GitHub directly from here. So now you can see uh, the application is starting. So while this is uh, happening, uh, I'll go ahead and discuss that what type of OpenShift in, uh, clusters which we can run over this extension. So for this demo, we are targeting to run our OpenShift 4.2 instance locally on your system. And for that, we have uh, code ready uh, containers. If you go to cloud.redhat page, you can see different options which are available. You can run OpenShift on AWS, you can run OpenShift on Azure, on Google Cloud, and even directly on your laptop. All these options, whether it is locally or remote, are supported by this extension. We'll go ahead and discuss more on detail with Red Hat Code Ready Containers. So if you go to the GitHub page of Red Hat Code Ready Containers, is basically, you can see it is a local OpenShift 4.x cluster, which will be running on your Mac OS. And to download it, uh, go to this link. It will uh, lead you to mirror.openshift. And uh, once we go there, we have different instances which are running. But before that, we have to uh, download certain requirements for that. Uh, that can be a pull secret. That will be a binary bundle and other details which are already uh, documented properly. So you have to log in with your uh, developer.redhat credentials, go there, download the latest bit. Uh, so for macOS, this is the download bit. 
and once that is downloaded and once we start running the code ready containers it will also ask us to provide the pull secret so we'll also have this pull secret downloaded and kept for later use so i'll go ahead and discuss that how you can run code ready containers directly on your laptop and then start with how we can leverage that with openshift connector so as previously you saw uh, we have the download available on mirror.openshift and we have already downloaded that bundle for mac and for the demo purpose i have already extracted it so here it is let's go ahead and see uh, what's the version of openshift it is running so the crc version is 1.0.0 and for openshift it is 4.2.0 which is the latest one. Now let's go ahead and start CRC. This will basically uh, check uh, all the required necessaries like the OC binaries, uh, the hyperkit drivers and uh, all other permissions. And after that it will start the VM for OpenShift 4.2.0. It takes approximately around five to six minutes for the cluster to be up. Once the cluster is up and we have the credentials ready, we will connect uh, this with the OpenShift extension. The cluster is up and running and we have the username kubeadmin and the specific password for it. And we'll use the same credentials to connect with OpenShift connector. So now as code ready container is up and running locally and we have our OpenShift 4.2 instance up, let's go ahead and connect to that. So I'll log into that cluster. So there are different ways where I can connect to the cluster. I that I can use username password using the credentials way, or I can also log into the cluster using the uh, token. We can get the token directly from the OpenShift console. We can cop once we copy that token from there, and you go ahead and select the token here. That will be automatically be pasted. But for this demo, we'll showcase how we can log in using the credentials. So I'll go ahead and there, and I'll provide the URL which I need to connect. So right now the URL which I selected was the uh, local CRC URL but if you want to connect to a remote instance so the URL which is present for that remote OpenShift instance needs to provide it there and once that is there we need to provide the username and password from which what we want to log in into. So kubeadmin is the username and the password is already stored here. We go ahead and say login. We wait for a few seconds for it to log into the cluster. Once the login is successful, uh, this view will be updated with the projects list present on that cluster. So you can see we have successfully logged into this cluster and the explorer will be refreshed automatically here. And now you can see the list of projects which are available into that cluster. So now when we go to the cluster we can see different actions which are available uh, we can directly open the console uh, for the cluster we can create a new project inside that we can also list down different components which are available different services which are available we need to log out from this cluster if we need to see what type what's the version of the cluster which is running and even if you want to check out the different commands which are running the different logs and different outputs we can directly check the show output channel from here and that will be opened so for example if i do show output channel you can see the different commands which have been executed here can be seen and the labeling is done as openshift so we can toggle between different labels and once whenever you want to come back and see what is there in the output channel we just have to select the openshift one and that will be listed here so let's go ahead and create a project for right now i have already created a project known as demo crc so a project uh, will have uh, three actions one will be to create a component the other one is to create a service and one will be how if you want to delete that project so for this demo uh, the idea is to create two components one will be a front-end component using node.js the other one will be a back-end component using java and we link those two components together to create a wild west game uh, so you can see you can create a component you can debug a component and you can directly deploy everything from the this extension itself and everything will be up and running now to access those components this extension also provides an option to create different routes you can create multiple routes for a component you can go ahead and 
add storage to that components and whenever uh, everything is added you just need to push that uh, those changes to the component and once it is pushed that will be deployed onto the cluster directly from the id itself so let's go ahead and create one component so right now uh, once we select new component it will ask in which application we want to create a component and if there are applications already present inside a project it will list them down if there is no application present in a pro project it will ask us to create one so for this there is no application present so i'll just create one more application application one two three and now there are three different ways where we can create a component the first way is if we have a component already present as a git repository and we just want to use that git repository to create a new component we use the first method if there is a binary file such as dot war file which we can use directly to create a component so we have an option to create a component using binary file and the last one is we can create a component directly from a folder which is present in our workspace so for this demo i will be using the git repository and the workspace directory one the front end component will be created using git repository and the back end component will be created using a local workspace directory so the functionality change which has happened with this extension with respect to the previous versions is that uh, right now whenever we create a new component whether be it by git repository or a workspace directory or a binary file every component should reside in a local context folder so what that context folder is actually so whatever changes we make in for a component be it creating a new route be it uh, adding any storage or any other configuration changes are being mapped into that local config folder which will reside inside your context folder which you have selected so the advantage of this context folder is if we want to share this configuration say to a different developer or use the same configuration on a different machine we need not perform this entire steps once again we can just directly copy that configuration file from uh, or share that configuration file and if whatever entries which are there in that configuration file will automatically be updated in your openshift application explorer view let's go ahead and create a front end application based on node.js and we'll be using the git repository so we select this now as soon as we selected a git repository it asks us to select a context folder and it will also list down whatever folders which are present in your workspace if you want to select any workspace folder as your context folder we can select that if you want to create a separate context folder which is not present in your workspace and we want to add that we go ahead and say add new context folder once we do that it will pop up a dialog box basically and it will ask us to create a new folder so we say demo dash wild west dash front end and we say create and then we say add this folder to the component in workspace so once we do this the workspace will uh, restart and this context folder will be added to your workspace so once we do that and then it asks us to provide the url which we want to use as a component so this is the git repository which we have and we go ahead and provide that and then it will this also validates whether you know, the git repository is correct or not if there is any incorrect git repository it prompts an error and it does not lead to the next step so once it has verified that it's a correct git repository it's a valid git repository it provides you to select which branch we need to select to create a component so this extension provides you a flexibility to select different branches to create a component for instance if we want to have a separate tag or a separate branch just to experiment and see if that component works you can create that as a branch go to this extension and select that branch as the branch which you want to create a component so for this we'll just select master branch once that branch is selected it will ask us to provide the name of the component so the name of the component is front end and then we go ahead and we select the type of the component so as i mentioned this is a node.js component so this will basic this will basically list down the different type of components which are available for the cluster so you can see there are different list which is available and we just go ahead and say node.js 
and then after selecting the type of the component we have to select which version of that type we need to select so there can be different types of the version which we have select do we want to select the latest version of node.js or we want to select a specific version of node.js we have to provide here so for the demo we'll just go ahead and select the latest one and once we do that the extension prompts us whether we want to clone that git repository so for this we say no but if any developer wants to have that git repository also cloned uh, they can go ahead and say yes so now you can see this component has been successfully created so once the component is successfully created it, res it resides in the local configuration so nothing as of now is pushed on your cluster so if we want to push anything to the cluster we have to push that component so there is an action which we have to push so now the component will reside in three different stages one of them is not pushed which the current current status is the other one will be the push status once we do a successful push of the component that component will change its status from not pushed to pushed and the third one is no context so this is basically for that type of components which do not have any specific context folder present in your workspace so if there are components we do not have any context folder present and if you connect to a OpenShift instance and in this view that will be shown as no context. So these are the three different stages where the components can reside. So now let's go ahead and create a new URL for that. So this URL will be basically the route from where we can access this component. So we go ahead and create a new URL. It will ask us to provide the URL name. So I'll say URL front and that's it. The extension will notify the progress that uh, the URL is getting created. So once the URL gets created, uh, the tree will be automatically updated with the name of the URL present here. And there will be an action here where, which basically allows us to directly open this URL in your browser. So now as we have the URL also created and the component all present there, so let's go ahead and do a push of this component. So once we select push action to it, basically what happens is this component gets pushed to the OpenShift instance which is running. And in the VS Code view, you can see the uh, streaming of the logs which has happened. In the terminal view will be automatically opened and you can see what at what stage the component currently is. So all those actions which happen will be shown directly here. So this extension under the hood uses OpenShift 2, which is basically a CLI tool to interact with the OpenShift clusters. So we'll wait for a few minutes uh, for the component to be deployed onto the cluster. So the main advantage here is uh, you need not uh, switch between different terminals or editors uh, to push a component you create a component here you provide the route here and you directly push the component to the cluster and a single click action is provided this basically enhances the developer experience and even the inner loop experience that everything can be done directly from your id So now after the component has been successfully pushed, the state of the component changes from not pushed to pushed and there are more actions which are available to that component. So after this, you can add a storage, you can describe a component, you can uh, check the logs directly and you can even follow the logs, whatever actions which have been performed. You can link a component to a different component. You can link a component to a different service. If there are components which are linked, you can unlink that component. You can directly open this component as the route has been created. You can open this directly from uh, this into the browser. If there are certain changes which have been made and you want to again push that component to that cluster, you can push it. You can even watch those changes while they have been pushed. If this component is present on the cluster, but you want to undeploy it, and after undeploy, the uh, component will basically be in the not push state and it will still reside in the local configuration. And the last one is the delete option where you can directly delete that component. Once the component is deleted, the resources associated with it like the URLs and the storage if created will also be deleted. So now let's go ahead and create another component which will be the backend component using Java. So 
I'll go to this application uh, because I want that component to reside in the same application. So I'll go ahead and say new component. And this time I'll select the workspace directly. I'll create a component from my local workspace. So as I want to create from a local workspace, this list prompts me that, okay, this is already present in my workspace. So I go ahead and select this. Now the name of the component will be backend and the type of the component will be Java. And we say Java and we select the version of the component. We'll select the latest one. And the extension will basically show you the progress that the component is getting created. So once this component gets created, uh, it resides in the local configuration. And if we want to deploy this component under the cluster, we have to follow the same procedure. We go ahead and create, uh, push that component. Uh, before that, let's go ahead and create a URL for that uh, backend component which we have. So we'll name this as URL back end and we'll say so now if the component has uh, different ports available to be exposed the extension will prompt us to select which port we want that route to be exposed to if you have figured out when we were creating the URL from the front end component uh, there was only one port available so there was no selection as it selected the default port but for this component we have multiple options uh, for the port to be exposed so we will select the first one and once that is selected the progress shows that uh, currently the url is being created and now as soon as the url gets created the tree gets updated so if you see the backend component is currently in the not push state so let's go ahead and uh, push this component I've been successfully pushed to the component and the component is basically deployed onto the cluster and the state of the component is also changed to the push state. Now, as the URL is also created, uh, let's go ahead and see uh, what's the status of the route which has been created. So we go ahead and open that in browser. So you can see, uh, this is the uh, entire route which has been created. The name of the route, the name of the application, and the name of the project. So this is where uh, the backend component is hosted. You can see a simple API is created using REST. And we will connect this API to the front end application and we will link those two components and see how that goes. So let's move to uh, VS Code again. So now go to this front end component and we intend to do link component. So as we have only one other component apart from this front end component, so we select that back end component. And then it asks us which port do we want to link to. So now as the route of the back end component was uh, on 8080, so we select that port. And the progress shows that okay, the component is being linked. Meanwhile, uh, let's go to the workspace folder and if you can see here, uh, right now I have two components. Based on that two components, I have two context folder present here. So this demo while this front end is the context folder for the front end component. And you can see there's a .udo file folder which has a config.yaml. And if you open this config.yaml file, this basically contains the uh, a local configuration entry which basically mentions what is the name of the URL, what is port it has been exposed to, what's the name of the project, what's the name of the application, what is the source type. So we use git to create this component and what was the git URL which was there and what type of component it was, what type of what version of that uh, component type it was. So all this configuration are mentioned in this file and as I mentioned previously we can share this configuration file across developers across teams so that the configuration can be reused and in the same way in the uh, backend component which was created using a workspace directory we go to this .odo folder which is present there and then we just select config.yaml file and it basically will mention that the source type is local workspace these were the ports which were available and this was the port which we used and what was the name and what was the project present. So now we have linked our front end component and the back end component and you can see the front end component has this fancy UI and in the back end component 
basically the idea is to hit some Kubernetes resources and display a message that what type of Kubernetes resources you have hit. So a simple UI and a simple demonstration that how you can link multiple components. Now, as we have already seen how different components are linked together, the different functionality of this OpenShift connector is it allows us to even work with the different Kubernetes and OpenShift resources directly from the ID itself. For example, if we need to work with the build configs or the deployment configs or the pods which are running, we need not directly every time go to the console dashboard and work there. It can be done directly from the VS Code itself. So uh, if you can see here, there's a Kubernetes extension here, uh, which is added as a dependency with OpenShift connector. So once we go to this Kubernetes Explorer, uh, this basically lists the clusters view. Uh, depending upon whatever entries which are present in our cube config it will list them down uh, be it a kubernetes instance or an openshift instance so right now if you can see uh, this is the default project listed for my local openshift instance which is running using code ready containers and this is the username which uh, i have logged in into so i'll just go ahead and see and if you can you can see the Q OpenShift resources are being labeled with different icons so that it can be pretty quickly differentiated and these are some of the uh, different resources which are present the different namespace the nodes the workloads and templates and the projects so in the project list if we go ahead and see so these are the list of the projects which are present in our OpenShift local instance and currently if you see uh, this project is sel selected now uh, as the default one is selected I want to select this demo CRC so I can just go ahead and uh, select the action use project and once we select this uh, use project whatever uh, and resources which are present will be updated based on this project so I go ahead and do use project and the notification will be mentioned that we have changed the namespace to the demo CRC and the view will be automatically refreshed this basically helps us to manage and monitor all this Kubernetes resources which are present on our cluster. This can become very handy when we want to directly start a build, pause a build, resume a build. We can even open that specific build into the dashboard. We can even open specific deployment configs directly into dashboard. So as you can see, this is selected as my current project. And if I go ahead and see, I can directly open this project in my console. Uh, let's move to the workload section and in the workload section if you go ahead and select the pods so you can see uh, there were two components which were deployed one is the front end one one is the back end one and with what are the different pods which are up and running into that cluster that information is shown and once you click on any of them you can uh, get a specific information you can debug that you can port forward that you can describe you can follow logs you can show logs directly inside your editor itself now uh, if i want to see what are the different image streams which are present I can see okay there are two components up there and there are different two different image streams present and I can open the specific one directly into the console I did not go to the console and search for that specific image stream whatever image stream I want to open I can directly open from my uh, extension itself the same goes for the deployment configs and the build configs so for the deployment config if you go ahead and see uh, if the backend component we can see the specific log we can directly delete that resource and we can even uh, describe this deployment config we can open this uh, into the console and the same for the build configs also so now if you see there's a specific action related to the build configs you can also start a specific build from for that specific resource and even open that into the console so uh, some of the actions which are specific to our resource can also be enhanced here if we are using this extension. For example, if I go ahead in this backend component and I try to open it in console, it will open this into my browser and it will sp specifically open this backend dash app one, two, three deployment config. Now as this uh, URL has been opened, it will ask us to log in with the credentials. So I'll just select kubeadmin and I'll go to my code ready containers instance where I'll just fetch the password. 
and I'll copy from here and go to the selling and I log into it. So now you see uh, the deployment config page is loaded and we can see the different uh, deployment configs present, the back end, uh, front end and all the actions present there. And you can perform any specific action if you want to do directly from the console or you can just go back to the VS code and perform all those operations. So this is the advantage which uh, we provide with respect to the Kubernetes extension, uh, which is added as a dependency with OpenShift connector. So this is it and uh, this was a quick demo. We are looking for more feedback from the community and we are available on the Gitter channel and a code is on GitHub. So if there is any feedback or any comments, do let us know. And all the required information related to starting up the cluster, uh, downloading code ready containers and uh, what are the actions available on for the extension is mentioned in the readme. So thank you for your time and have a good day.